What's up everybody, Adam here with E Trailer. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at an upgrade for our Taxa Outdoors Mantis trailer, and that is the Furion Observation System. Well, we have everything all hooked up, everything synced up, so let's take a look at the monitor. Right now, I just have it facing the back, I'm just looking at the one camera. I can go ahead and click right, and I'll go to the right camera, go to the left, and that'll be the left camera. We only have three, so we don't have that fourth camera, but if you wanted one, you can grab one separately. But another thing you can do, which is cool, you just click here and click view all. And now, as you can see, we have all of them in our view, and if you click the center, you can do modes, so you can either have it all in the four corners, but I kind of like this one just because you have the center and the center and then the left and the right. So let me get out and show you exactly what we're all getting. So, so now with our left one right here, hello, 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 hello. So that one's on the left, and then we have one in the right in the back, which is just basically where our little third tail light is up up top so you can see me here as well we're gonna have the same exact setup on the right side as well it's gonna be the same one for the right and the left and that's basically it so we really have a great idea of what's really going on here the really cool thing about this system specifically is we can wire it with a signal wire so if I turn on my blinker to turn right it goes to the right camera and then if I take it off it'll go back to all of them and then if I am turning left, shows that. I think that's really cool and that's really, really unique to the monitoring systems you have options of on our site. If we wanna utilize the blinker function, we're not gonna be able to just be looking at one camera and then turn on our blinker. It's not gonna change over. So what you need to do, it needs to be in the all mode. So now it'll go through just like that. And this way, it'll be able to actually utilize that function. So all you need to do in your settings, you're gonna go press that button, go to setup. We're gonna go to auto display. We're gonna turn this on and then pick which one we want. I like this one. And then you turn this off. It'll give you this little disclaimer. And then once that's off, even when I power this thing up for the first time, let me unplug it. So right when I plug it in and power it on, now that I have that all set, it should pop up to the all, which is enabling our blinker feature, which is super cool. Well, it's getting dark here. It's about five o'clock-ish. Sun's going down and the brightness is going down as well. But with the night vision, it's actually kind of nice. It takes a lot of the color out, but it uses the night vision technology to be able to see. So that is a lot better than me just looking back there because it's kind of dark. But with this, it doesn't really look any different than during the day. So that's a really nice feature I really, really like because half the time I'm not backing up or turning or anything in the sun. So when it's dark, you don't have to worry about it. You can see Zach right there just walking around nice and clear so we're not going to hit him. There's really a lot that goes with this system. There's a lot of different adjustments we can make. So let's go over all those settings on the screen right now. So what you wanna do is we can press this little button on the right side. It'll bring us to the menu, right? So what we really wanna do when we get this all set up for the first time, you can just click the whatever camera you need to sync up. There's gonna be a button on the camera system. You wanna press that and then it is going to sync it all up. I have it all perfect right now, so we don't have to worry about that, but that is accessible through that button, which will bring us to the menu, and then we can go into the setup if we wanted to. So you can have like an auto display to make it to where when it turns on, it's gonna to go to the setup that you like. I have all that all set up right here. You can turn it on and off, or you can just set to which one you really like. Also, in the menu, we're gonna see the picture. So for each camera, let's just say the rear, uh, it's a little bright for us right now because the sun's facing it. So we can kind of turn this down a little bit like that if we really wanted to. We can go back. We can mess with the contrast a little bit if we wanted to. Up or down, up or down. And then we can also go with the color as well. So more color, less color. 
pretty basic stuff, but there is a lot of different settings for each camera, of course. And then after that, we're just gonna have the version down here. So that's nothing we really need to mess with, but there is a lot of different stuff here with the menu. And that's all accessible with this little button on the side. And then to get out of the menu, all you gotta do is just click that and we are good to go. We have two different mounting options that come with the kit. We're gonna have one that'll just kind of sit wherever you think is best. I don't necessarily love this one just because I feel like it might move around a little bit, but it does have some rubber feet, so it's not gonna slip as easily if it didn't have those, but I didn't use that. I like the suction cup mount because it kind of gets it up. It makes it give you a nice little spot. It's like for me, it goes right on there, and both of them have these little balls here, which helps it rotate around so I can get it nice and in the corner to where it's not really obstructing my view a whole lot. But you do have those two options, but my preference is the suction cup mount. And wherever we do end up putting it, the power cord's gonna go in the back right here. We measured it out, it's about six foot long, which is perfect actually for where I'm putting it. So I have it right there. I'm actually running it back, kind of behind everything up and out of the way of my feet. I'm gonna run it past here, put it in this little crevice, just so it stays nice and tight. Pull that up, and then I still have plenty of room to plug it into your 12 volt outlet. So I like that, and if we did wanna get audio, I don't have a audio jack on my vehicle, but if you do, you can plug this in and you'll get audio from your cameras as well. So cable is plenty long, so you can kind of route it around so it's not really in the way, and it really gives you a nice clean look. Comparing the screen to some of the others that you have options on choosing on our website, I like this screen. I like the bigger one, the five inch would be plenty good as well, but the cool thing about this is it's gonna give you a 720 by 480 resolution. So it's gonna be plenty clear, but it also has color, which is awesome. You can also adjust everything, we went over that. But the cool thing about this is it really is a lot more sleek and it looks a lot nicer than some of the other ones that we have on our website. So this is definitely gonna be top of the line whenever it comes to the screen and the quality. This is a wireless system. So when you are in a open area and not moving, we're gonna have close to 500 foot of range. That's a lot. But when we are moving at high speeds, like driving down the road or anything like that, it's gonna be about 50 foot, which still for your bigger rigs, that's gonna be plenty of distance so you can have connection throughout the whole entire trip. Another cool thing we can do is go through our menu and then we can go to setup. So with this, we can just kind of adjust the different orientation. So we can either rotate it around if you have it like that, you can just keep it normal, but you can also flip it. So as you can see, you can go ahead and kind of get your cameras all set up to where it makes sense to you. You can do that for all of them. But then also in the setup, you can adjust the volume. We can adjust the auto dim so if we wanted to start dimming whenever we're not using it, we could do that. You can do the auto shut off to make it turn off within 10, 20, or 30 seconds of us not using it. But you can also do motion detection. You can do low, medium, or high, which is kind of cool. So there's a lot of different things we could do with this. So let's go ahead and turn the motion detection all the way up to high. We're gonna go to setup. We're gonna go to motion detect, and we're gonna click on high. So now I'm gonna walk around and see if it detects my motion. We have found it takes a little bit of time for it to switch over, but it does do it, which is cool. So now let's go to the back. Hi, hello everyone. But then once it switches over, it's good to go. So just give it a little bit of time This is gonna be really helpful whenever you're backing up. Maybe there's a lot of traffic and stuff. You can set up the motion detection to where when you're backing up, it'll let you know where that motion is. Also for at night, that's also gonna be kind of a clutch thing. It is gonna do very well with night vision. So 
Uh, it says around 39 feet is what you're going to be able to see at night. So there are some lights on the back one, which will kind of light up and kind of help you out. There's just a lot of cool features with this system that I think are just come in handy whenever you're backing up, just to give you peace of mind so you can do it flawlessly in front of whoever may be watching. And that's kind of a big thing for me. I wanna look like I know what I'm doing and this is gonna definitely help with that. When it comes to the setup, so what I noticed is I plugged it all in, I was wondering, I was like, why isn't it turning on? Why isn't it turning on? So right now, it turned off on us. Well, the way we tied it in where when the running lights turn on, so during the day, what we would have to do, you can either cover up the little sensor so then eventually the sensor is going to detect that it's kind of night. So that way it'll turn on automatically. But if you don't really like doing that, which I don't necessarily love doing that either, what we can do to turn it on is just turn on the running lights on the left side of your steering wheel. And once I turn it on, now we got signal. So it needs to have power and that all just depends on how we set it up initially. Some of these trailers are pre-wired for this Furion system. If that's the case, all the wires are gonna be right where you need them to be. You don't have to run anything. But for my situation, it wasn't. So we installed a junction box and I'm just gonna run you through the setup that we went with on our specific trailer. If you're starting from scratch and or just have a decent amount of accessories you plan on putting on your trailer, junction box. Trust me, it is the way to go. It keeps it nice and clean. All the connections are all where you need them to be and it's really easy to test. So that's what you wanna do whenever you're setting up your trigger wire. We wanna turn on the right blinker and we need to test and see. So this one right here, nope. This one right here. Yes, so that is gonna be one of our blinkers. And now I just switched it over to the other blinker. So let's see which one's which. There we go. So if you need a test light, we do have them here at E-Trailer. And if you don't have a junction box, we also have those at E-Trailer, along with everything else you need to install all of your wires and such. So that is what this looks like for us. So I just ran one wire to one side and one wire to the other side. In our case, we had a side marker light right here. So we just replaced it with the Furion system. And pretty much you're gonna have to supply your own hardware. So we're gonna have two here and then two over here. And then of course, just use whatever hole that you made or that's already there to run your wires through. And then what we do is you take the actual camera portion and we're gonna slide this in. And once that's in, we have these two little holes that line up just to make sure that doesn't go anywhere. And this, these screws are included with the kit. So kind of line that up. Screw it in just so it doesn't move at all. You don't really have to over, you don't have to tighten that that much. It's nice and snug so it doesn't move anywhere. And once we get that, then you can just pop this cap on and we're good to go. And underneath this is what we're working with. So the wire that I ran from our junction box, that's gonna be our turn signal, is our trigger signal wire. It's the yellow wire that just goes to that. And then we're gonna have the V plus traffic lamp and the V plus camera. Those are gonna be twisted together and tied into your positive wire. And then you're gonna have ground, which of course just goes to your ground wire. So that's pretty much all there is to it. There's only three wires coming out, but there's four wires going in. And you just have to double up the two positive ones to the positive wire. So it's pretty simple stuff. And if you are wondering what's gonna be the best connection, these are heat shrink butt connectors. Since it's underneath this trailer, we don't want any water to get into it. So I still have to heat these up and then of course loom it and wrap it in some electrical tape, but definitely grab some whenever you are installing and you can grab those here at E-Trailer and also the wire as well. It's gonna be the same exact thing on the other side. You're just gonna to have to wire another one to your corresponding blinker side. So make sure you hook those up. You don't wanna turn your left blinker on and the right camera turns on. So just be sure and make sure of all that, but it's pretty much the same exact thing as over there. And in the back, we're not gonna have the signal wire just because it's in the center. We're not gonna need it to turn on when we turn right or left. 
and it's pretty basic stuff. We actually ran it up here because we do have some really cool lights on top. So whatever really works best for you, you just grab power and ground for wherever and it connects wirelessly, which is awesome. So this is probably the easiest of all of them. To sum it all up, when it comes to observation camera systems on our site, in my opinion, this is the coolest setup. It looks the best. It's not as bulky as some of the other things. You get options on screen size. It's a color screen and you have that blinker function. That is very unique to this system and nothing really else has that function. So I definitely like it on here. If you're deciding between getting one and not, I highly suggest it just because this is a pretty big investment. We want to make sure everybody's safe on the road, but also you and your rig. We don't want anything to happen. And this is just gonna give us that peace of mind whenever we're going down the road. And that'll do it for a look at the Furion Observation Camera System on our 2020 Taxa Outdoors Mantis Travel Trailer.